they say things gained through unjust fraud, they are never secure. So when you gain things through fraud, they say whatever you are going to get, you are going to lose one way or another. But the question here, why all of us, all over the world, not only you, very sophisticated investors all over the world, they don't lose millions, they lose billions to these fraudsters. How can someone where he is very sophisticated, investing for the last 20 years, and he got all the knowledge and expertise and analyst being a victim for someone who just started the fraud scheme. Because all of us, we believe in our heart that there's some mystery in the world. We love mystery. Every time we go and hear about a new drug, we hear about a new solution, we hear about a new magical way, and we believe, Maybe this is the next big thing. Maybe this is the thing that's going to be unbelievably great. Maybe this is a way for me to make easy money. And because this is the way or this is not the way, I don't want to miss out. All of us, we have this issue. We don't want to miss out. Why we check all the time our social media? Because we don't want to miss out something. Maybe it's there, but we don't know what is that. But let's check. Maybe we'll find it. And the fear of missing out will drive us to do things that we should not do. Because the guy who is showing you the investment opportunity, he said two things. The investment is there. It's you or someone else. Decide. Now, you don't want to miss out on so that way. You say, maybe it's the issue. Maybe that's the thing. So let me take you over a case study to understand how this happened. This case study is very, very interesting. It's an old case study. This is the story of someone who believes in miracles. So if I ask any of you, do you believe that this thing exists? What we call it? Unicorn. Do you believe in unicorns? No, unfortunately, all of you, you believe in unicorns. Why? Facebook is unicorn. Google is unicorn. Uber is unicorn. So the definition of unicorn that they came up with in 2013 saying, any organization that is starting from nothing as a startup, and we are expecting that it's going to exceed the 10 billion, the 100 billion, the 1 trillion, because they are working on something unbelievable that we really don't understand, we consider it as a unicorn. And here are the unicorns. You can see media is unicorn, mobile, social, cloud, big data, enterprise, e-commerce. All of them, they started from a very simple website like Amazon.com, which is just a website. They don't have the goods. They are only selling the goods from the suppliers who got the goods to now something worth hundreds of billions. It's a unicorn. It's a concept. Someone creating an organization where they have no cars like Uber, and now they are making money more than any transportation organization in the world. Someone started something like Airbnb where it's only a website, they have no apartment, no hotels. They are making money more than any hotel in the world. So it's a unicorn. Someone will come and tell you the future is this. But you are not sure yet because you haven't experienced it. It's not tested yet. And someone will convince you, you invest with him. If he will deliver a great, you will make a lot of money. But if what he is saying is only a dream and he doesn't deliver, so you are going to lose everything. And this is the ability of someone to create reality distortion. To tell you, look at the future. Look what can happen. Look at this potential. Because you don't understand this industry, or because it's so complicated for you to understand how it's going to work, you think, wow, it's a mystery. It's something weird. It looks interesting, but I don't understand it, so I'm going to invest. So let me give you an example starting with the old days in 2000. In 2000, we have something very big. We call it what? We call it the internet. Everyone said the internet is the new unicorn. The meaning is something we don't understand. We are connected over the internet. So if you move your banking service to the internet, you will make so much money. If you move your training to the internet, you will make so much money. If you move your consulting to the internet, everything is going to be there. So everyone thought that what we need to do, we need to actually look at this organization and their financial 
the information if they are a dot com company differently than a normal company. Because normal company, they have offices, they have employees. These dot com companies, sometimes they have only a couple of employees and they just have a website. But they can do magic. Because everyone is using the website so they don't need to have the employees. Everyone is operating in, in the cloud over the internet. So let me ask you a question. If you are evaluating any organization to know what is the actual valuation for this organization, I want to know this organization, how much the value of it. To understand, for example, if I need to buy it or invest in it. Which is the right financial method for you to use? Is it looking at the share price multiplied by the number of the shares in the market to understand the market value of this organization? Or is it looking at the present value of future cash flow? Which one do you think is the appropriate method to assess the value of any organization existing in the market? Financial. Which one do you think we examine? If I look at IBM, I need to know how much the value of IBM. What do I look at? Actually, from accounting standpoint, if you study finance, we say the right method, the right method is to say how many shares they have for IBM and how much the share price Based on that, I understand the actual value for what? For IBM. This is the actual value currently happening in the market. Because this is how much everyone believes is the value of IBM. But they said, no, 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 no. For these dot-com companies that they just started, this is not the right approach. Why? Because they just started. There is no value. They just created a website and they have no customers yet. They are about to acquire customers. So what we need to see, we need to look at how much they said is the future cash flow, which is billions, and we need to discount it to the day. So the value of this organization is 70 billion, is 100 billion, is 20 billion. Because currently the actual market value, there is nothing. They just have some shares and they have a server. They didn't start it. But we need to assess how much money they can generate in the future. And this is where the minute investors and the minute all the financial professionals and bank and institutions start thinking completely the wrong approach, looking at future expected return that may never happen, everyone said, now these are unicorns. These are organizations that they are gonna bring millions, but some organization they didn't start yet. And at that time, we don't call them dot-coms organization. We call them what? dot com. Because they are taking your money and we don't have an idea if they are going to deliver or not. Are we going to get your money back? Well, we don't know. Until they start operating and we see if they are going to generate money or not. All these individuals who believe that this organization, just because they are going to offer loans over the internet, just because they are going to provide their services over the internet, they are going to make millions and billions that was not the actual reality. This organization, they just started and the amount of profit and revenue they generated was not justified. So what happened to all these unbelievable stocks? They crashed. And we have a big crash in the market and all these investors, they lost their money. So this is the first mistake. If you go and you see something and you don't understand like how the internet is gonna change our world, and you believe this is the next unicorn that you need to jump on so you can make unbelievable amount of money and it will not happen, you are going to lose your money. But is this happening all the time or we learned from 2000 and today we are living in 2018? The answer, we didn't learn the mistake. Why? Because you can see ACFE recently, they reported what are the five most crazy, great cases related to fraud and they said that number one case is the case related to a very interesting privately owned healthcare provider. So this healthcare provider decided to do something very interesting, decided to revolutionize what we call blood test. So let me explain to you what will happen in the healthcare. Healthcare diagnosis accounting for 70 billion US dollars. The meaning you go to a lab and you give them a, a blood sample and they go examination on the blood sample and then they tell you your result. They discover that 70% of your medical information that doctors need when they are assessing your health condition 
is related to your blood. However, the process of going to the doctor to give them blood, is it a pleasant one? All of us, we are afraid from this needle because it's not a small needle, it's a very thick needle, right? And it's gonna go and hurt you and you see all this amount of blood and you ask them, do you really need all this blood to do the testing? I thought you just need a little bit. They say, no, we need all this blood. And you see them taking all this blood, then for the whole day, you know, you are dramatized with the experience of actually going to give a blood. And they discover because of that, so many patients, they don't go and give their blood for diagnosis because they are afraid of the process. Or if we go and do this examination, how often you go and you check your health? Every one year? Every two years? Sometimes individuals, they go every three years because they just don't want to go where they are going to take that blood sample from them where they feel it's, it's a very you know, crazy process. They, they hate it. So an organization came up with an idea. They said, how about we create revolution? We introduce a new machine that you can buy from the pharmacy and you use it just on your finger and you just take small amount, very small amount of blood. They say it's one percent of the blood that the lab will take. In some situation, it's about even 0.1 percent of the blood that you know, the, the lab will take. And then it will go do all the analysis and it's much cheaper than any lab. You will get your result by just submitting this information to this device and this device can actually tell you all the results that you want. <coughs> Revolution. The whole world is gonna change, why? Because now we don't need to go to a doctor. The doctor can get all our reports by us using this device then sending the information to the report. We can every day do a uh, check. We can check early about diseases that can happen. And behind this unbelievable revolution that's gonna change the whole world of healthcare, it's a lady who actually dropped from um, uh, school and uh, they, she decided to go actually rather than in, in doing her uh, uh, study in the college to actually work in this innovation. Her name is El uh, Elizabeth uh, Holmes. She created something all of us we love. Don't you like it? Yes. Do you like her? Yes. She's amazing presenting how she is devoting all her life to help all of us get much better. Her mission is to ensure that our health will be the best it can because we don't need to actually go and do all these lab tests. We can just use her device to actually just give a small sample she said, one drop of blood can tell us everything about you. One drop. You don't need to go and give a lot of blood. So she started her organization with the same message. And guess what happened? She got investment with 45 million. Because everyone said, great idea. Why she got all the money? To do the actual lab test. To actually make the idea become reality. Then she created the research, the scientific research, to support that her machine can give results as accurate as the result we get it in a very sophisticated labs. Because remember, the labs is not a small machine. They have so many machines to run different kind of tests. And here she promised that she can do all these examination with her device. Can give you all this result with the right accuracy. So she did all the research. And she said, based on her research, these machines are great. So she decided to go and introduce them and sell them to Walgreens. Walgreens in US is one of the largest provider of you know, uh, pharmaceutical solution. So she went and she discussed the issue with Walgreens. Now Walgreens, they went and they decided to hire a consultant, an independent consultant, because they don't understand the technology to go and actually examine her scientific research to see, is this a good investment opportunity? To see, we go ahead with it or not? So they hired this consultant. The consultant looked at all the scientific research and he reported to the executive of Walgreens, these scientific research showing that her devices are not effective. They are not getting the results and reports, that they are not accurate. So what do you think Walgreens in that case 
they will do. They will say, thank you so much, consultant. We are not going to buy the solutions. No, they believe this is a unicorn. They believe, no, 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 it's going to work. Why? Because they are afraid. If they say no and their competition, CVS, they take the opportunity and they launch it to the market, they will make billions. So they ignored the full report of the consultant that they hired and all the scientific study that's saying this is not going to work, which is generated by the organization and validated by this consultant. And they said, we are going to go ahead with the investment and we are going to take their product to put it on our shelf for customers to go to buy it to do the blood examination. Wow. Not only that, patients start rather than going to the labs, they feel sick, they feel they have certain diseases, they go and go and use these devices. So one lady, she was feeling not, uh, not that good. One day she went to a uh, world she bought the device, she did the blood examination, she gave it to her doctor, her doctor said, oh my God, you have a high uh, blood pressure, you have this, you have that, based on all this examination. So in that way we need to put you in four, four days in the hospital. Then when they run a normal blood test in the hospital, discover she's okay. So you can imagine the drama that patients all over you know, the world lived because they are using this commercial product. Now you wonder how come the government will allow her to introduce a medical you know, device that is very critical for the health of the patients. Well, in that time in US, the area that she's speaking about is not a lab description and is not an actual medical examination. It's in a gray area in between because it's a personal device to assess your blood levels and it's not regulated under any of these regulations. And even see, she submitted some of her reports showing that the device is not accurate to the FDA in US and they said, okay, we need to look at it to decide what we are going to do, but we are not going to make decisions right now. But because she was able to sell her devices in the market, what she went and did, she went to all the investors and they said, hi, how are you? Can you see our research that we started so many years ago? Now it's becoming reality. It's a machine in the supermarket. Anyone can use and buy and they can get their blood results. So this is going to be the future. We are going to be at that time. They did an evaluation for the company and they said the value of the organization is going to be more than nine billion dollars. Would you like to invest? Of course, everyone jumped on the investment. And who invested with her? The most sophisticated and the smartest individuals in US. Because they said, this is the big unicorn. This is going to be as big as what? As Apple. They, they said she is the Steve Jobs of healthcare. Because look how she's speaking in the same way. She speaks about the vision, the future. Can you imagine she is giving all the statement where she knows 100% that these devices are not effective. But you hear her and she's creating reality distortion. She is making you believe that yes, it's going to happen. She got that ability to convince you that what she is saying is exactly what's uh, the reality. But it is not. And not only you, all these big investors, she got on her board of directors the most sophisticated and prestige individuals to be on her board of directors. Now you wonder, these guys who are on her board of directors, and they are very well known and they are so smart. How come they are actually not managing? They are not creating corporate governance because they don't understand the technology. They look at what she is saying and they believe her. Even they see operation is doing something else. She will say, look, we did this. Look, we did that. Whatever they will say, she will say something else. And they believe in her vision and even they give her more money. How much money she was able to connect, collect? more than 700 million US dollars. Remember at a valuation of what? Nine. Of 9 billion. And she was able to run her scheme over eight years, collecting more than 1 billion US dollars. She was showing financial report to her investors, showing that she is generating a year 100 million, while in reality, her total revenue is only $100,000. What? How interesting. Where are the controls? Where is the governance? Who's actually looking at the operation? How come no one inside the organization reported? They don't have whistleblowing hotline? They said, yes, 
if she told if anyone will report anything to the media outside, inside, they are going to be fired and sued. And she actually had sued some of the individuals who tried to report. So everyone is living in culture of fear. Because imagine if you are working in the lab and you know you are working on a device that's not going to work in the market and you are deceiving millions in the world. And you are working for her organization to create all these devices. So what happened? A guy was actually working on a research to understand if these machines are really effective or not. And he discovered that these machines will not work. However, look what they say. It's sad how some individuals believe on their own lines. And this is what happened to her. She lied and she believed her lie. And she will go around, she says, look at the amazing thing we are doing. And she really believed that she is helping someone, but she is not. She is only helping herself. But now she can't stop the lie anymore. Now, at the beginning, maybe she believed she is going to create an amazing device, like anyone else, like Steve Jobs. He said, I'm going to create the next phone. But Steve Jobs was able to deliver the next phone. For her, she was thinking about the next medical device that will help all of us. But the scientific study failed. But what she decided to do, rather than saying to the investors, we are so sorry, we failed. Here is your money or liquidate. She said, no, we succeeded. Let's go ahead with it. And that's the difference between someone who will admit that they lied or they admit they failed or someone they say, no, 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 we don't fail. We are going to succeed. But however, when John, he was doing the research about her devices, he discovered that these devices are not giving the accurate information and he decided to publish that in Wall Street and then it was a big scandal because the whole world learned that actually she is deceiving them. And what happened oh, after that, of course, the SEC came and of course the investors came and everyone trying to validate what she is doing. And it was the biggest fraud in the history of healthcare. They discovered that this innovation is not working. They discovered that that investment is only a big fraud and they accused her with massive fraud. However, the case was settled at the end when she returned most of the investment money that she got to the investors. She actually closed the company and she liquidated and they took some charges related to fraud against her and that's the end of the story. And uh, soon we are going to have a documentary movie about it from HBO. They say if you have one lie, you need to question all the truth and this is what will happen. So when someone is actually telling you about this reality and you see one lie, you need to question, is he telling the truth or not? Because maybe he's not real. It's interesting when we look at the medical fields and what happened. 